Why do so many great companies fail? Inspired by the work of author Clayton Christensen, in this video, we'll explain one, disruptive technology and the innovator's dilemma, two, how to use innovative solutions to avoid disruption, three, how to customize our template with the top innovative tools to get you started, and if you watch all the way to the end, we'll explain four, how a company like Zara, the world's most successful clothing retailer, could use these tools to adapt to governments that wanna end fast fashion. Two words explain why so many great companies get beaten by newcomers, even if they're managed efficiently, focused on productivity, and generate solid revenues. Disruptive technology. There are two types of technology, sustaining technology and disruptive technology. Oh, and fun fact, Clayton Christensen originally coined the buzzword disruptive technology as that which helps newcomers overtake an incumbent's market share. Before there was the personal computer, there was the mini computer, a huge unit that was mini compared to original computer. The creators of these computers would year after year develop faster mini computers to hold more memory because managers and developers had profit incentives to focus on their sustaining technology. What happened? They got overtaken by upstarts who created the personal computer, a product consumers wanted and which eventually turned Apple and Microsoft into the world's first $3 trillion market cap companies. So, how do you avoid being overtaken or overtake your competitors with disruptive technology? Let's review some of the top innovative solutions that you can use, like the Scamper Ideation Map, Concept Screening, Innovation Ambition Matrix, Discovery Driven Planning, Organizational Continuum, and many more that are available to download as part of our Innovative Solutions presentation template. First up is the Scamper Ideation Map. To develop a disruptive concept, it first must be envisioned. The brainstorming tool Scamper helps with this. This sticky note style visualization simulates how a physical brainstorm in the office might feel. Answer the questions under each bucket to form your ideas and drag the sticky notes to rearrange them across categories as you ideate. For a quantitative evaluation of your ideas, use this concept screening slide to evaluate new ideas against key criteria needed to meet your specific goals. Once there's a vision for what to create, that's when innovation ambition matrix comes in. No one can be told what the matrix is. No, not that matrix. This matrix tracks investments from core to transformational technologies in order to determine resource allocation and ROI via the pie charts on the right. Core is sustaining revenue stream technologies, while adjacent technologies build off core technologies and test the water of new markets. Transformational technologies are completely future focused. Stick to the end and we'll explain how Zara could use this tool to combat efforts to upend its business model. So how do you know how much to invest in each category? Use the 70-20-10 rule. A safe allocation dedicates 70% of resources to core technologies, 20% to adjacent, and 10% to transformational innovation to test the waters. Think about Meta and their 10 billion allocation to VR and the metaverse through Metaverse Labs. With 71 billion in expenses in 2021, that accounts for about a 14% allocation. After that initial allocation, adjust accordingly each quarter based on the return. R&D and marketing teams like to prove ideas based on user data, but you can't prove a market that's currently untapped. The thing with disruptive technology is that no one knows if it's going to work. Even Mark Zuckerberg doesn't even know if the metaverse will actually happen. Discovery-driven planning is a tool used to carefully tread the water without burning out. This table organizes growth plans across the key strategies to employ, the assumptions they'll operate on, the horizon, either near, mid, or long-term to manage current and future growth opportunities, the level of confidence in the plan element, and how critical the assumptions are to the goal. Add these up to get an overall score, with the score over 15 top priority to move forward. It's not that you can't come up with the right radical idea. The goal is to not run out of resources before you do. Fun fact, the creator of this framework created it based on a list of failed projects based on untested assumptions taken as fact that lost their organizations at least $50 million. So if you wanna avoid creating perfume as a plastic pin manufacturer or vegetable flavored jello, you should try this framework. A big part of the innovator's dilemma is the decision on how to structure a company to address innovation, which should be based on the organization's unique resources, processes, and values, or RPV. These three elements determine how and what decisions the company makes. As Christensen says, early stage startups depend on their initial resources, like founders, while an established company relies more on process and values, and hire and replace thousands of people 
every year. This organizational continuum chart helps plot team hierarchy to help manage innovation. Since innovation is not a one-size-fits-all solution, every company's RPV structure is different. As a larger company, commingling a disruptive team into a sustaining team typically won't work because the two competing goals will clash and one will overshadow the other. In that case, it's much better to create a spin-off team with separate goals to provide the autonomy that both need to survive. For a startup, a traditional hierarchy might work best to streamline resources and workflows. All right, so how could a company like Zara use these tools to innovate given the EU's new rules that force fast fashion retailers to change their business model by 2030? Given this horizon and the criticality of the EU as a market for Zara, it will need to update its organization, product, and delivery practices. First, Zara will need to brainstorm how to eliminate or reverse its waste problem. It already has a repair and reuse program to drop off used garments in store, so it can dedicate more budget to grow this initiative and maybe even modify its e-commerce storefront to offer resale directly. For delivery, it can adapt AI to calculate more accurate product volumes. For product, now that it will aim for 50% recycled material in all of its new products after 2022, it may need to adapt and modify its business model to charge more for higher margin. The key here is that Christensen says the innovator's dilemma is not actually a technological challenge, but a transition point where technology satisfies enough where it actually becomes a marketing challenge. Think about why fast fashion overtook high-end retailers to begin with. Consumers wanted convenience, reliability, and of course, low cost. Once product performance is good enough, the user experience dominates. If Zara can create a great resale experience, it could starve off the competition and regulators so long as it convinced customers to buy less and pay more. It will be a tough needle to thread though. Remember, you can download our innovative solutions template for these tools and more slides on industry attractiveness, context map canvas, R&D allocation, market adoption curve, profit margin projection, demand, and performance, plus many more to save time and hours of work. Thanks for watching.